can chronic use of uh, SSRIs for depression actually lead to uh, fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome? Well, that's a great question. Can chronic use of SSRI medications lead to fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome? You know, um, that's interesting. If we could sit down and have a glass of wine or two, we probably could, you know, look at the biochemistry because what happens is, and I talk about in my depression book, what the research shows is that the longer the people are on these medications, the less serotonin receptors their brain has. So what happens is we have all these serotonin receptors that uptake serotonin and allow us to be able to use serotonin. The longer you're on serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, the less receptors you have. The less receptors you have, the less serotonin you have. And that's the, that's the problem with antidepressant medication. That's a great question. So glad you asked that. Now I have to really try to see how I can think that through. That's great. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Would you recommend probiotic therapy in early childhood as a preventative measure? The uh, question was, would you recommend probiotic therapy in early childhood development? Absolutely. There's a study that just recently came out that shows, uh, that it's pretty definitive, I think, that shows that um, by starting infants on probiotics, that uh, they reduce the, they increase their resistance to infections all across the board. So absolutely, I would recommend that. And uh, of course, the probiotics, we don't have time to talk about that, but you know with patients that you work with, they have yeast overgrowth. It's very important with that. Uh, probiotics, we didn't talk about leaky gut um, and, and all those things. But probiotics are, are very, very important. And, for, and, and let me take a second if I can. But um, what, you know, the, the, the thing is, is, uh, you know, when we eat, <laughs> okay, <laughs> two things. One thing is this. We have a trap, we have a door here, right? And, and when we start to eat, the bolus just goes down the throat, the door opens, the food goes in, right? And hopefully it doesn't come back up. And like a plumbing system in our houses, we hope we don't ever see it again. You flush it, don't want to see it again, right? That's what our digestive system is. Now, what triggers the door to open is the food. What triggers the door to close is what? See how smart you are. Not very. <laughs> Sorry. What triggers the door to close is hydrochloric acid, stomach acid. Now, if I had a way to show you that, but what happens is, as the food is, you know, as the food's coming down, the door opens. The stomach acid triggers that door to close, so you don't get stomach acid back up in the esophagus, right? One of the worst things we could do for our patients is put them on antacids or proton pump inhibitors because oftentimes it's not the fact that they have too much stomach acid. They have too little stomach acid. That's why the door doesn't close. That's why it leaks back up in the esophagus. You can catch that early on. You can correct that with digestive enzymes, betaine, hydrochloric acid, bitters, or pancreatic enzymes. Now, where am I going with that? I don't really know. Where am I? Oh, oh, here we go. So what? One of the things that you need to to uh, to keep a healthy environment and intestinal tract is a lot of good bacteria, and you need to try to keep things out like yeast and other things. One of the things that keeps yeast out of the intestinal tract is high stomach acid. Probably in your practice, you're going to see anywhere from 20 to 50% of your patients are going to be on, on uh, acid blocking medications. That's a recipe for disaster. Um, it triggers all kinds of nutritional deficiencies. But one of the things you'll see is, because of that, you'll start having problems with, if you look at in, inside the intestinal tract, you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of yeast. We all have yeast. Now, a lot of times yeast is the panacea, you know, treat yeast. Everybody gets yeast treatment. You know, you don't want to do that with fibromyalgia until later on. It's not, it doesn't cure everything. But it's, you have to think like a detective. And so you've got yeast, but you've also got good bacteria, right? 
And so you take an antibiotic, and what happens is you kill the good bacteria. Now the, uh, the yeast start to take over. And when the yeast start to take over, they attach themselves to the intestinal wall, the little hook. And once that happens, then they cause the mucosal lining of the intestinal tract to become permeable, leaky gut. I'm sure you've heard that term. When the intestinal lining becomes permeable, you start leaking across food particles instead of being broken down into uh, uh, nutrients and waste products, start to leak across and get in the body. Now, you're literally mixing poop into your bloodstream. That's how toxic it is. And that creates chronic inflammation. The way to avoid that is to load up on probiotics because probiotics keep the yeast in check, but also probiotics line the intestinal wall. And even if you get yeast, they, they, permit, they, they prevent the yeast from attaching to the, to the intestinal wall and sending out an antenna. It's more than you ever wanted to know. But there it is. So I want to thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I'll be happy to answer questions while I'm here uh, this, this morning. Thank you.